Well, I'm sure this is something none of you guys are expecting. Yeah, there's a topper on the truck now. The only thing is this topper's not staying on the truck. It's not mine, I'm just borrowing it from a friend of mine. Matter of fact, he actually just doesn't have anywhere to put it right now. So it's living on my truck because it fits on there real well, as you can see. And it it looks all right on here. I mean, like, yeah, it looks good, but I just had it off a couple of days ago. And I definitely like the truck a lot better without it. But the main reason that I'm making this vid is what's in the back. That's the uh, color that goes with the Cub. That I just got out of the garage and sitting in the back of my truck to keep the rain off of it. I just picked up this Onan P218G with what seems like great compression. I was told it has low compression, but it seems to be just fine. Uh, it has electric PTO on the back and the exhaust manifolds. So I'm not exactly what, sh uh, what tractor this engine is out of. Um, looks like some work is done to it somewhat recently because some of those bolts look to be pretty new. Uh, next thing is, I have a bench seat from a 73 to 79 Ford pickup. Reason being, the, the old 70s Ford seats are much more comfortable and they're a lot more like a couch than the 80s Dodge bench seats. And the reason why I got that seat is because the seat that's in my truck is getting pretty bad and it's even since I've patched it just a, about a week ago it's already torn there and it's already tearing through on this side over here and a couple of different places and I noticed my seat belt uh, plastic is starting to break so yeah this this seat's in pretty poor shape I mean it's it's all torn through in the end and it's torn through in the back I mean, it's all duct tape on this corner. And the price of getting a new cover for this seat is a lot more money than it is for a Ford seat. So I figured, all right, you know what? This seat's kind of firm. I mean, it's fine for a short drive, but if you're driving two plus hours, I've talked to several people and they tend to agree with me that these Dodge seats are really stiff compared to most old trucks. So that's why I got the Ford seat. And the guy that had the Ford seat said that he had a passenger side Dodge front fender for one of these trucks up in his barn. And I told him I needed a driver's front. So he walked up there and looked in the barn and sure enough, it was a driver's side, not a passenger side. Um, there's only one small dent right here in the front. It is a, otherwise it is a dent-free, bondo-free, not rust-free fender. Um, up there, you can just barely see it where it's a little brown section that's rusted through and the inner structure on that side's uh, rusted through at the bottom, but the wheel lip is not rotted out at all. So I'm really happy about that because I got an aftermarket fender from Rock Auto when I bought my truck. It came with the truck and those fenders don't fit well. I've, I've been told that these gaps don't line up right, like it's basically the fender stops right about there. All the bolts in the top don't line up at all. And this fender, while it's not super hard to see it in person in video, it's kind of hard to tell. But you can barely see it's it's pushed out. It's pushed out a considerable amount. I mean, the hood gap is wide enough that I could shove my thumb in there. And it's all creased up in the front and there's bondo on this fender i mean it's it's been repaired for before but the main reason for getting an original fender versus a reproduction not only do they not fit well but they're not galvanized these original ones are because that's down to the bare metal anyways and the last item is this generator this generator is kind of special yeah that's right it's a diesel I got I lucked out when I found this and it actually has a, uh, a glow plug on it with an aluminum intake manifold so that's rather intriguing um, I'm not exactly sure what size engine this is 
I'm thinking it might be a 10 horse. I'm not positive. Someone might be able to confirm with me. Um, it does have electric start on it. It does have the, the wiring harness, but let me show you the other side. It says GT power on it. And check out the hour meter. It has 50 hours on it. But it's it's a very complete unit and looks to be in pretty good shape. Yeah, it's oily and dirty, but what diesel is it? And then I also got a rigged up exhaust. The previous owner made they took the original elbow and made this exhaust to quiet this thing down. But he said it ran great um, the last time he used it and didn't need it anymore because he finally ran electricity to the back part of his property. Put some beefy uh, battery cables on this thing. Definitely overkill, but it'll do the job. So yeah, there's the uh, finds from last night. I know I'll be going to good use soon and you'll see what my ideas are with the generator. I'm sure you can already figure it out. Because I really do regret selling that last diesel series I built. So, till the next one. Uh, I'll see you guys later.